it's that day that I've getting it in my mind I'm going to make persona. So I've got me uh, I've got my trusty basket and I'm going into the greenhouse just to see what we've got in the way of tomatoes to harvest. Now I think there's some nice ones there and I think there's too many to eat with me bacon sandwich in the morning. So uh, oh I they look nice. <coughs> so let's just pop in here. Now hang on first, I'll just turn off this radio. I've got a <laughs> I'll show you look, I've got a radio up here that's connected to these little solar panels you can see there and that's so when the sun comes up all my plants can get a bit of fresh music uh, so we'll see what happens anyway so look at this look at these look at them can you see them my goodness mate look at that little lot there's a load gosh there is there's a load there now these are the tigery ones that i planted up last year debbie really liked these and now oh my god Oh, they are awesome. The tomatoes taste like tomatoes. The snozberries taste like snozberries. Now look at these. These are just going over. So that's why oh, I got one. That's why I reckon that we'll get them uh, get them turned into passata. Now the reason I like making passata so much is that um, when you get in the middle of winter you just fancy a bit of summer and quite often unless you're going to go off to some supermarket to buy your bits and pieces you're not going to get anything super fresh but if you've got a couple of bottles of prasada sauce that you've made in the summer look at that man look at that half a pound in that if you've got these great tomato sauces and jars full of this stuff which is what you get of course then it's, it's actually perfect to make a pasta or a tomato soup or you can boil it down a little bit more and you can turn it into uh, a base lovely tomato base for pizzas fresh pizzas oh my goodness there's loads on here oh i missed these the last time i had a picking i think i think this whole lot are just a little bit soft but you know what they'll, they'll be fine in the sauce absolutely fine in the sauce see if i can get a truss off to show you look at them they're lovely small sweet full of flavor absolutely full of flavor now you might remember that these have just been fed on the worm compost oh look at them man. oh look at that look at that these have all been fed on the worm compost from the little worm farm i showed you now remember i made that out of an old fridge freezer so there was no cost incurred at all other than the box of worms that i bought on ebay now they cost about eight quid for a box of worms. Didn't half scare the postman, mind. <laughs> when he delivered, he's like, the hell you got in there? <laughs> the packet was doing that. And uh, But once he knew there were worms, he was all right about it. <laughs> and uh, so, oh, look at these, look at them. So these tomatoes are beautiful. And you've got boxes of tomatoes. Now I can, I can freeze some if I want. Oh, look at that, look at them. I can freeze some of the tomatoes if I want to. Um, I can probably bottle them whole if I uh, if I wanted to. But for me, it's passata. Um, now I'm also growing some lovely basil here. So we'll, we'll get a couple of the basils as well and put that either in the sauce when I boil down the, the tomatoes or I can just put the fresh basil in the bottom of the jars. Look at this, man, look at that. You see these? Look at these little babies here. This is a great picking. And it's not the first one either. I've been eating these now for a couple of weeks. Um, I picked off the little ones first because I just couldn't wait. I had to have tomatoes before Debbie got them. So I picked a couple of early ones and we had them with my salads and they've been lovely. Now you might remember the salads. I'm picking them from here. This is that hydroponic system. Oh, that one's gone over a bit. But I've been picking the fresh leaves. So what I'll probably do now is pick the whole heads. But the flavor to the inside is completely different to the ones that were grown outside. You ask me what's this little lot I'm growing here? That's corn salad. Now I'll be planting some of that inside and some of it outside. And we'll just have a look and see how it grows. Now I'm hoping that the corn salad will work well in the hydroponics because that way I can replace all these lettuces 
tops with more fresh greens for the winter. And remember, that's one of the times that you've got to give a bit of thought to, and that's your winter, because you've always got loads of greens in the summer, but not many folks think about what they're going to do in the winter. Now there's a load up here, look. These are not ready yet, but they're coming on. But look at these little babies. Can you see them? Look at that. That's a lovely truss, isn't it? Yeah. Hang on, hang on, dim look. Mmm, completely different to the red ones. These are quite sharp and lemony. Lovely. Mmm, very nice indeed, actually. Very nice indeed. I'll enjoy them. Oh, is that one ripe as well, do you reckon? Yeah, looks like it's just ripened. So, I think that's it for now. I mean, there's still a few more left, but I don't want to take them all off. I'll give them another day or two, maybe a week or two, and then we'll have another picking. But we'll get these inside there first, get the fresh basil going with it. The onions as well. There wasn't a lot of them this year, mind. I didn't plant many, but what came up, came up really well. Very happy with them. But the garlic, <coughs> terrible. <coughs> the garlic was a total, total disaster. It just got wet, wetter, in wettest and then rotted. There was nothing I could do about it really. Well there probably was but I didn't know what it was. Big success this year. Tomatoes. I'm hoping, I'm hoping that all of these babies will start fruiting shortly and they're peppers. Now they're not bell peppers, they're chilies. They're really hot, really hot chilies. And I've still got some from, still got from last year. Yeah, I hanged up for the seed. But when they come out, my plan is to make a real ring stinger curry and then I'll invite you all round for it. But for now, let's get these tomatoes inside and see how we turn them into a sauce. So we're back inside the house now, which is not bad because it's just coming on a wee bit of rain. We've got the tomatoes and we're going to make a passata sauce. Now, normally when you make a passata sauce, it's uh, it's a bit of a palaver. You know, you've got to get all your, all your bottles and your jars have all got to be sterilised. Then you've got to make your sauce and then bottle it and then sterilize it again then boil it again and then cool it and, and all you get is a jar of bright red sauce to stick on a shelf which you don't normally do anyway you tend to put it away in a cupboard so i thought today we'd try it a little bit different would make my sauce would make a passata and in the passata is all the tomatoes that you've just seen these have just come out of the greenhouse now i'm just busy de-stalking them at the minute and giving them a good wash i've also got a few of the onions from the garden chopped up and some beautiful basil from the greenhouse. Now the idea is today when we make this sauce we're not going to bottle it, we're actually when it cools we're going to bag it. Now the reason we're going to bag it is because it's going in the freezer. Now the reason I like to put it in the freezer is I can see how much I've got. I don't have a very big kitchen, it's quite small but I've got a very big freezer. So my idea was we could bag it off in here, seal it off, remember, freeze it flat. The reason for freezing it flat and not in a good big bag, you get better storage. If you want, you can even put like a plastic crate in and you could, you could file all of your sauces or whatever you want. Now remember, get either from a Tesco or the supermarkets are available. But get a bag you can actually write on the bag. Don't fall for that trick where we all go, no, I'll, be, I'll remember what's in it. I will. I'll remember. And then you come back about 18 months later and there's just this brown mass frozen to the side wall of your freezer. And you know it's something that you want to be, can't even remember what it was. Or worse still, you, you get a paper stick out of you. I'll just put that on there for now. And you put a paper label on it. And you come back and the label's still on, but the ink is completely washed off. So you've still got a brown mass stuck to the side of your freezer. But the idea is by putting in a nice see-through bag, double seal on the top, remember, double seal, stops anything getting out. And don't go putting it in when it's hot, right? Because you'll end up with it like a, no, you didn't want that. Nice, cool it down a wee bit, then get it in the bag, then freeze it. But anyway, let's have a go. So I've just washed all of these tomatoes. And as you can see, they're beautiful. They're absolutely lovely. I've given them a really good wash. You know, one of those little stalks. Take the stalks off, they're not very nice. Now what I'm going to do is, I've checked to make sure there's no rot. It's actually quite okay 
if you've got a split that's not a problem as long as there's no badness there make sure that there's no rot no black marks and definitely none of them right okay so they're all washed and they're all cleaned now I've got a pan of boiling water here but I can't go putting them straight in like that I'm going to chop them up a bit first dice them up nice and clean and then put them in there because I actually want the skins to release themselves now I don't I really don't mind prosciutto sauce with skins on them but quite often if you're making something I don't know like a pizza base you're, you're making a nice pizza sauce or you want it to go in a nice pasta dish other people when they look at the skins they're like oh, could you not be bothered to take the skins off and I hate to say to them well actually no I couldn't be asked so, now they don't need to be tiny you know they can be good sized pieces because you want to be able to take the skins off now I know it's a clot I know it's a palaver but honestly it's worth it at the end of the day even if it's just to stop your dinner guests I mean if you have dinner guests you know I sometimes do even if you don't want them just having a bit of a go at you so just chop them up get them in there boil them for about I don't know, three or four minutes just enough to release the skins and then they're done another tip make sure that your knife is really sharp if you don't have a sharp knife and you try to cut tomatoes you'll end up with tomato squash you want a nice sharp knife if you can't use one of these things get yourself a good knife sharpener if you can't use a knife sharpener impressed many years as a boy working in a butcher shop now if I don't watch what I'll do I'll do what I did when I was showing off at 17 year old 16 actually to a most beautiful girl called Jennifer Harris oh she would come into the supermarket where I worked she was so stunningly beautiful I went and I went straight through the end of my finger and I ended up in hospital having to have it stitched back on again so Jennifer Harris I will never ever forget there you go sizzling away in the bottom of the pan isn't that first class and then over here we've got the tomatoes in and you can see the skins there are just starting to come straight off them so I'll get them out peel them let them cool then get them in there or probably I'll get them out let them cool then peel them Now you see once they've cooled down they're very easy to just take the flesh away from the skin because uh, it improves the flavour, it improves the texture and it improves the sauce at the end of the day and that's what it's all about. Now you'll notice that I haven't given you any quantities other than you know a big box of tomatoes and a couple of onions. Well that's because for me the pleasure in cooking is the creative side. For me it's about flavour, so as I'm working with this, I'm tasting it. Does it taste nice? Do I like it? Because, you know, if I follow somebody else's recipe <laughs> and it doesn't taste nice, what's the good of it? So I'll just cook it up myself. It's going in the freezer so it's not going to spoil. And if I do produce something at the end of the day that, you know, just, I don't, just isn't that nice? Well, all you do is grate carrot into it add soy sauce and call it crofter's broth okay so here they are they're all skinned the flesh is all there if there's a little bit of skin in don't panic it's not going to kill you so let's get these in with the onions and then get them cooking now some may ask what are you going to do with those skins paul well i'm very tempted just to eat them i really like tomato skins now what I might do is lay them out on a, on a tray with a bit of greaseproof paper, sprinkle some garlic salt, some sea salt and some pepper on top, maybe drizzle it with olive oil and then cook them through. Let them get a bit crispy, then put some parmesan cheese on top, melt it in and you've got a snack fit for a king or a queen. Okay, so that's it. You've seen me make it, boil them down, push them through the sieve and this is what you get left now i have to tell you that the smell from this is amazing i mean you, you take a sniff of this and you can smell the garden you can smell the basil i can smell the onions but when you taste it oh 
oh my god that's like a personal moment i mean it's rich it's thick it's not runny i boiled it down a little bit let the excess water evaporate it's got an excellent excellent texture that will make a superb pasta dressing or um, base for pizzas it's just filled with italy well actually it's filled with foras up in murray because that's where i grew it all but it tastes of italy now you may ask paul but what do you do with all the little bits you had left over well this is what i had left over we just turn this a little bit for you that's what i had left over this is what we call homemade bread with a nice big blob of lurpak now when it comes to butters other butters are not available oh look at that I've waited all day for this and then a spoonful of this goes onto there like that and I'm, I'm not going to adulterate it with salt or pepper or absolutely anything all I'm going to do is bring it down here to let you have a look at that now look at that that that's the leftovers now that's the bits that wouldn't go through the sieve. Now let me just try this. Homemade bread, low pack butter and rubbish. wow okay so here we are we've got the bags i've got this just to hold it to stop it flopping around in and we've got this amazing look look how rich that is can you see it's rich and thick it's cooled off a bit now so i should be able to get it in here without melting it now remember make sure it's completely cold before you go putting it in the freezer Now, now I hope you'll agree with me that uh, it was well worth a little bit of effort to make. I got two good bagfuls and I've kept a bottle off. So pasta tomorrow night. Um, I hope you'll agree with me that it wasn't that much work to do. I'm getting some lovely food back to go into the cupboard. I've made the best of some tomatoes, some basil and some onions. And I'm having a bit of a treat for myself. Now, life should be brilliant. If it's not brilliant for you, change it. Join me again on the next video and we'll see if it will excite you about potatoes.